Okay, so everybody needs to have your name, your class period, and the date for today. The title of this book that we read yesterday, we read the first page of Runner. Okay, so this is an example of the project you're going to do for me called Annotation Circles. And in annotation circles, we're going to talk about the different types of reading. This is the different kinds of reading you're going to learn about this year. So everybody knows how to do basic reading where you just read what's on the line. So I need you to write that inside that first circle, reading on the lines. The other type of reading you're going to do is called reading between the lines. What does reading between the lines mean? Use context clues. That's a good answer. What else? Annotate. There's a usually a word that we use that starts with an I. You have to do something. Infer. Good job with infer. Okay. So reading between the lines is when you infer things from what you've read. And then there's reading beyond the line. So reading beyond the line that's on the text, if you read beyond the line, this is when we start talking about themes in literature, okay? So when you had to do themes last year, there were some requirements about themes. First of all, when you think about a theme, Eileen, what would you think about? What is a theme? What does it mean when someone says theme? Um, I don't know, like a group or something you to. Okay, so it belongs to a group, it belongs to an idea, that's sometimes like the theme of something. What would you say? Message. The message. It's the message that the author is trying to get you to pay attention to. So if he's trying to get you to learn something, trying to get you to learn a lesson, that's the theme. But when you write down a theme, what does it have to be? Like grammatically. So, are you just going to write down hope is the thing? Say what you just said again. It has to be in a complete sentence. So, for your project, you're going to come up with two theme statements. So, for your project, you are going to take something that you're reading right now for Project 20. But to show you how we're going to do this, we're going to use something from Runner yesterday. This middle paragraph is one of the paragraphs that we read last year. I mean, yesterday, not last year. We did read it last year. It says, In the seedy streets of Richmond, you would find not you would not find two finer neighbors than the Redmonds. And if the truth be known, they were more like grandparents to my brother and me. So yesterday, we pointed out one word in this paragraph that was something that we didn't know before. What was it? Seedy. Seedy. I, I hope you knew the word grandparents before. Okay. So, what you're going to end up doing on your project is you're going to find a quote from your book and you're going to find a word that's important in it to you. One of the kids in one of the other periods was reading The Fault in Our Stars. They had the quote that said, some infinities are bigger than others, okay? So, infinities was their important word. So, you're going to relate it to your own book. So, here we have CD. What definition did I give you yesterday for CD? Shabby. Shabby or unkempt. And there's another one that some people said today, run down. So part of your grading is you do the quote, you find the important word that needs to be defined. Don't pick a basic word like trees, rock. It's not important, okay? So it's going to be something that you didn't really know. But it has importance to the meaning of your story that you're reading. So reading on the lines is just telling us the word, telling us what it means. Because we're just doing the surface layer reading. Now, reading between the lines is something different entirely. We're going to have to start inferring things. Everything in reading between the lines in this circle needs to refer back to the word CD. So if we're going to do that... You're going to do it with pictures. It's a picture of the seedy streets of Richmond. So this is like a clip art picture of a neighborhood. When you do your project, it has to be in color. 
So you're either going to color, draw and color the pictures, or you're going to print out little pictures that are in color. Don't print out black and white pictures, okay? Because part of your grading requirements is that it has to be color. So what I'm going to do is I have to take this and relate it back to CD. So I'm going to say the CD neighborhood they lived in. If a place is CD, what do you expect it to look like? So it's going to look run down. I need you to use words that aren't already in that definition that we just wrote down. It's going to look old. What else? Somebody said nasty. What's another word for that? that starts with a D. Disgusting. Disgusting. Dirty. Crowded. Full of trash. So I took an image. I talked about in between the lines. Even though they're not telling us that there's old buildings and it's dirty and it's full of trash, you know that if you know it's the seedy streets of Richmond. Okay? That's your inferencing. The second picture I put in is a picture that relates to the bottom part of this quote. It says, no two finer neighbors than the Redmonds. Okay, so I would put this picture of these two people and this person has like an award because they're a fine, upstanding person. So, even though the streets are seedy, what kind of people do you find there? Okay, so they're, are they really fancy though? We talked about her teeth being black and she needed to go to the horse dentist. They're nice. What else are they? Okay, they're kind and generous to the boys. So even though the streets are seedy, the neighbors are fine and caring people. So do you see how even though these pictures are not in the story, they still relate back to seedy. They illustrate what you should be inferring. Okay. So this last picture that I'm going to put up, what I need you to do is we're going to do something called pair share partners okay so i'm going to put this picture up and you guys are going to turn to one another in your rows you two rows you guys talk amongst your own row y'all turn together y'all turn together y'all talk amongst your own row you two and you two okay so i'm going to put this last picture up and i need you to look at it and talk about how could you relate it to cd and the story Okay, so I did the first two. You're going to do this one. Y'all talk to each other. So those were good answers. That made sense. So what I need you to do is copy it down, okay? What you guys said was great. Family can still be found in a bad CD neighborhood. Okay, so family can still be found in a bad or seedy neighborhood. So now, because theme is usually the hardest thing for you to come up with, we're going to partner off again and do pair share again. Remember, you have to come up with two different sentences that express the theme. Look at all of these things in the middle circle that talk about CD and make it into a sentence. What does that mean? What should you be learning from this? Okay, so what is the author trying to teach you? Go. Okay, guys, while you're thinking about this, stop for a second, because remember, we're reading beyond the lines. One of the things that got pointed out in one of the other class periods, the name of the town is Richmond. If you look at the root of that word, Richmond means rich man. Are these people rich? 
Okay, the author didn't just pick that for no reason, okay? He was using irony there. So think about that, too, when you're looking at your theme. So for the two thematic statements, I'm going to write in my circles just from listening to you guys' ideas. The first one I'm going to say is even in bad places, there's still hope. Even in bad places, there's still hope. Because remember, we want to avoid cliches. So we don't want to say there's light at the end of the tunnel or don't judge a book by its cover. Okay? So even in bad places, there's still hope. My second thematic statement relates to what you guys just said, okay? So even though people don't want to be in a seedy place, love and family can be found anywhere. Okay, you need to make sure that at the end of those thematic sentences, you put a period because the grading on punctuation is going to be part of the grading for your project. Okay, so your project's going to be due Tuesday. I'm going to give you a blank version of this. You're going to use it on your own story. So right now I'm going to show you the rubric of how I'm going to grade it. Yours is going to look like this. You're going to have actual color pictures. Remember, you can either color them yourself or you can print them in color, but they have to be color. That's part of the rubric. Let's look at the rubric. Okay. To get a 90 to 100, you're going to have your keyword selected. What was our keyword? CD. Okay. So we're going to have a quote that reflects the word significance in the story. So don't just pick a random quote that has a word you don't know in it and try to relate it to the story. It has to make sense, okay? Give multiple definitions of the word. We said CD meant unkempt and shabby and run down. Those were three different definitions. The part that people have trouble with getting that higher part of the gradient is this one that says place the word in context of the whole work. We talked about why CD was important to the neighbors, to family, to what the place looked like in setting. So we did that in our example. You're going to have colorful images or objects that show the significance. You have to have three of them. Two thematic statements derived from the word, tying the word to the whole work, just like we did. We're not going to write the essay, so you don't have that part. And make the work neat, colorful, and correct. To get an 80 or a 90, you're going to have grammar errors. It's not going to be as bright and vibrant and colorful as it should be. But for 70 to 79, it's going to be hastily and thoughtlessly done. That means I'm going to send you a remind on Monday to remind you your projects due, and you're going to write all this scribble scrabble down that I can't read. That's when you're going to get this low of a grade. So be sure that your writing is legible, okay? This is how your project is going to have to be done. So you have from today until Tuesday this week to get done. Yes, it's a daily grade. 